This is part two of our St. Augustine trip, where we left off at the end of the last video we were leaving the beach and heading to breakfast on our second day there. If you like this video, make sure to check out part one to see how we got here. Okay, Aaron, what are we doing now? We're headed to Manatee Cafe. We have a bunch of vegan options. Um, this is going to be our breakfast. So, we have a bunch of manatees on the door too, it's pretty cool. Oh, sorry, this is our brunch, not breakfast. It's like, what time is it? Let's see. Here. Nine. Nine o'clock. Okay, so the Manatee Cafe was amazing. Um, definitely like as good as I could possibly have hoped. We all loved like the flavors were so good. It was cooked well. The options, there really were tons of uh, vegetarian and vegan options. Actually, most of everything was vegetarian. It could be ordered vegan. Um, the juices were good. Our food came out quick and the server was really good, nice, and um, timely. So yeah, that was, that was incredible. We'll probably come back again tomorrow morning for breakfast. Um, but for now, we're gonna go bathe ourselves and get ready to go on a museum expedition throughout the day. All right, we're here ready to go to the surf museum in the oldest house complex and we found charging. It's not always easy to find charging for that works. So this is super exciting. Um, now we're gonna go to the, old, the oldest house museum complex. There's a St. Augustine surf culture museum in there. I'm so excited for that. St. Augustine walking! <laughs> For those of you who have seen our Shillong Meghalaya video from earlier this summer on our trip to India, that was a reference to when we were in Shillong and I said Shillong walking and then cut the video right there and didn't really show any walking. And to accidentally keep with the theme, I did not get any more footage of walking in St. Augustine than this. Whoops! But where we were headed to was super exciting. We were headed to the oldest house, museum, complex, and gardens. As you can see now, we're in their gift shop where they have a great selection of books and some other things. But the complex ex itself was amazing. We're about to be on video headed on a guided tour of the oldest house museum. So the oldest house is Florida's oldest house, though I believe it would be not actually the oldest house because there was native tribes in Florida before the European settlers came, but this is the oldest house from the Europeans. And I'm not sure if they account for that or if the Floridian tribes were nomadic and did not build houses. But either way, this is the oldest European house, possibly the oldest house. And our tour, which commences soon on camera, was super in-depth and amazing. Now, at the complex, they also have the Webb Museum, which is the oldest purpose-built museum in the state of Florida. There's ornamental gardens, a rotating exhibit gallery, a surf culture museum, which we do check out, and that was a highlight for us and the main reason we actually went, though the oldest house museum actually even ended up being amazing. There's the Paige Edwards Gallery and the museum store, which you just saw. Where we're entering now is the Surf Culture Museum, 
the vibe in this surf museum was something that I think every surfer should experience for themselves with the videos rolling and the sound from the videos and then just the general feel of being surrounded by surf history. I think every surfer, especially Florida surfers, especially St. Augustine surfers, should visit this museum at some point in their lives. It was truly an extensive exhibit showcasing St. Augustine surf culture and history. There was all kinds of things to do. You can sit there and watch the surf films for hours and hours if you wanted to. I definitely plan and hope to return to this museum someday in order to read through the exhibits and to watch more of the historical films on surfing that they play in the museum. There was so much, there was no time to do it because we were waiting to go on our tour of the oldest house, but I did get some footage to kind of just show the general feel of what it is like in there. But you definitely should experience it for yourself if you're ever in the area. One thing I learned in the museum that I might have already known to some extent somewhere in my mind, but I wasn't really aware of it, is how far back before the surfing boom in the 1960s in the United States that surfing actually was a thing. So surfing in St. Augustine went back all the way to the early 1900s and maybe before, and I didn't realize it was that old. I knew in Hawaii they've surfed for a lot longer, um, but I didn't realize that it was like that outside of Hawaii. But, alas, surfing for recreation has been going on around the world for thousands of years. However, the modern iteration of standing atop a board to do so, outside of Hawaii, is a much newer concept. So early St. Augustine history coincides with early world history of doing so. But, like I said, this is definitely somewhere every surfer in the area or visiting the area should visit. It was super cool and I definitely plan on coming back. I also, as a side note, really think that every big surf area should have some kind of museum like this for their own lo local culture because it really is a very cultural thing. The surf world industry and surfers themselves really have their own world going on and something that they're focused on with their entire mentality. It's a lifestyle and I think it's worthy of a museum a good museum like this everywhere where there are where there is good surfing going on now this is the beginning of our oldest house tour what he's demonstrating right now is how they used to filter water for clean water purposes so they would put it through that pumice stone and then add alcohol so all of saint augustine at this time was drunk and we learned a lot more about St. Augustine history. He'll go through some of that now, and I hope you all will enjoy. The original home was actually only this room here that we're standing in and that extra room you see in there. Everything else was a later addition that we'll get to, and the original home would have been lived in by the Gonzalez family. The patriarch of whom was one Thomas Gonzalez, who was a Spanish infantryman who was actually born and raised over in the Canary Islands. And he joined the Spanish military to, you know, find a better life for himself, when we got to St. Augustine, he found it because he got very lucky and happened to meet, seduce, and marry a local wealthy woman named Maria. And we know she was wealthy because her parents gave him this house as part of her dowry to raise Thomas's station, make it a little more of a fitting match for their daughter. And they built it using coquina, which you can see from those cutouts on the wall there. And outside of the forest, only 12 structures at the time are built using coquina because it is so expensive. Now, they also give Thomas a little promotion down at the fort which is a bit of a backhanded compliment. It may have meant that Maria's parents didn't like him too much because they got him a, a position that had a pay and rank increase only because of how dangerous it was. They bumped him up from infantrymen to artilleryman, which made he man the can seven years war. The reason it has so many names is some people call it the First World War because of how many different countries were involved. But bottom line, at the end of the war, Britain captures Havana from Spain. Now at this time period, Florida's kind of a big swamp that's not really developed properly, so no one really wants it, where Havana is the port that fuels the entire Spanish Empire. So all of their wealth from the New World goes right to Spain, and so they don't really want to lose that and actually trade the entire state of Florida to the British just to secure the port of Havana back in their possession. Now, that didn't put St. Augustine in British control, and the British, as, British, as the British at the time were wont to do, kicked out all the people in the bottom floor, 
is a drinking establishment full of British soldiers, so you do not want them having easy access to your bedroom in the middle of the night to demand more ale. So they had a separate exterior staircase, and I'm sure a very good padlock on the bedroom door. <laughs> See the kitchen. Would we be able to do work in there? The kitchen. They don't want that hot fire inside the house. Hey, just a quick little intermission to first of all, thank you all for watching the video if you've made it this far. And second of all, to ask you if you have made it this far and you've enjoyed it so far, if you could hit that thumbs up button, it really helps push this video further and it helps the channel greatly. So I would really appreciate that. But also I wanted to mention that the coquina stone that was used to build the oldest house and the old fort the St. Augustine Fort, um, was actually mined from, or was taken from the quarry, which is located in the state park where we're camping during our stay in St. Augustine. So we talk a little bit more about that in the first video in this series. So maybe when you're done with this video, if you enjoy it and you want to know how we got here, check out that, that first video on our channel. Anyways, now back to the action. All right, that tour, we just went to the oldest house museum complex. And I didn't record too much because I realized that the tour was so in depth that I'd have to literally record him talking the whole time to really explain that the point I'm gonna make, which is that you should definitely, if you're in St. Augustine, take that tour. It was epic. It, we learned so much about St. Augustine history and especially the history of that house. And we got to see how like people in that day and age lived. Um, very interesting. Next up on the list, we have the St. Augustine Aquarium. We're headed there right now. See you there. That's a lion fish, I think. Yep, yeah. exactly. So that's one of the ones I like to talk about the difference between them. Like I said, if y'all have questions, let me know at any time. Okay. Else good. Um, so we do have a puffer fish. This one's called the striped burfish. Um, all right, in this one, we have some seahorses. Um, there are three kinds around Florida, 25 or so around the world. We have two of them in here. We have what's called the long snap seahorse, which is the smaller, lighter colored one up at the front. And all the dark ones are called lion seahorses. They're not going to get much bigger than our lion seahorses are. Either a queen angel or a blue angel. It's very hard to tell when they're smaller. That's called a rock beauty. It's also an angel fish. This is a jewel damsel with the blue spots. What is that? That is a French angel fish. Now, you'll see right now, if you get a good look at it, it has stripes and spots. When it's smaller, it only has stripes. When it's bigger, it only has the spots, so it'll lose those stripes eventually. Uh, exactly. Oh, everything in here is nice. Uh, I won't let you touch something that would hurt you. Huh? They have the gill version of scorpion lungs here, and they have um, a lot of eyes like a spider. Or, yeah, spider. Uh, these guys have nine or ten, depending on the person. Some will say one, some will say the other. Uh, they have simple eyes like the sea star that just see light and dark, and that's all but these two big ones. So the dark dots here, some on the bottom. 
And the one I said, depending on the person, some say they have one at the end of their tail and some don't. Two bigger eyes, they're similar, dars, they see color, all that stuff. So the aquarium was not bad, but not probably worth what they were charging to get in. However, that being said, the two biggest attractions we did not pay for tickets, pay extra for tickets for. So maybe that would make it worth it. One of the attractions being swimming in this tank that you see here. People could snorkel in there for, I think, 40 something dollars each. And then the other attraction was feeding sharks and stingrays. So as you see here, they have some pretty big nurse sharks in these tanks and um, you could feed them for an additional fee. We didn't pay for that either. Uh, we assumed that the aquarium would be extensive enough for us to be able to have a full experience without paying for those extra uh, things, but it didn't really end up being the case. I think most of what people go there for is for swimming in the tank and for feeding the sharks and rays. So missing those, we didn't have the greatest experience, but still it was okay. It, it wasn't terrible. There, nothing bad happened. It was just a little bit expensive for what we did end up experiencing. Another thing that I thought of while we were there is that I can't believe they actually allow visitors to feed sharks with not really any real training, just some words of guidance from the, the guide. Um, I wouldn't really want to stick my hand in there with not much experience and feed a shark. Okay, we're leaving the aquarium now to head to the Old Jail Museum. That's supposed to be like top-notch museum. Um, we're excited about it, the Old Jail. I learned some about it, but I'll, I'll go over that during voiceover during the footage from there. Um, as far as the aquarium, the, it was, uh, the tour guide was very knowledgeable, but there's just not much here, so. And then the last thing, the grand finale, is shark feeding and ray feeding, which we don't have tickets for, so we left a little bit early. But now on to the old jail museum. Super excited for that. So we aren't too thrilled about our trip to the aquarium, but that happens. Um, we were blindly going just because we saw an aquarium and that sounded cool. Um, it just kind of wasn't worth the money um it would have been fine for about half the price but yeah anyways we're going to the old jail museum now and super stoked about that that's it's a real jail um built by henry flagler who came to town he was the big rich guy in the early 1900s that came to town and he built the he, he was building all kinds of properties and then he built a jail, but he didn't want it to look like a jail because he didn't want to scare his uh, rich friends from investing in the city. So he disguised it to look like a hotel. So that's the old jail museum. We're going to go look at that. It's uh, supposedly the inside is, is preserved to look like the jail. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see what it's all about there. We're pulling in now to the old jail museum. It ended up being a great tour, really unique and very enlightening as to conditions in early 19th or early 20th century jails. It was terrible, the conditions, and we learn a lot about that, but I'm going to let the tour guide do his talking. You guys are going to get to come along for part of this tour. So sit back, relax, and watch the old jail tour guide give his tour. Next jail processing, next jail processing in 15 minutes. Line forms here. No, it says no cussing, no spitting. And she's spitting. And you're spitting. What are you spitting for, girl? Jail line forms here. Get your papers ready. No cussing, no spitting. What do you see? Three thirty jail processing. If you are stepping into my jail, if you have not done so, present your paperwork to me and get in my box now. All right, everybody, welcome to my jail. My name is Harry. 
and I am a trustee at this year institution. That means it's my job to guide you through the process of being processed. Y'all going to jail? Yeah. Everybody going to jail? Give me your papers. Yeah, all y'all have just walked up. Now, papers, papers, papers. I guide you through the process of being processed. And don't worry, I am somewhat good at my job. I have the lowest death rate of all my processing tours. Most of you will survive, I think. Oh, no, we'll play it by ear. Now, part of my job is to give some background on the history of our fine institution. So in 1891, our jail was built by Mr. Henry Morrison Flagler's ever so generous donation. You see, Mr. Flagler is the second wealthiest man in the world. You know what that means? He can do whatever he wants. That's what that means. He came down here from Jacksonville on his fancy railroad and decided he loved that little town so much, he was going to stay around a while. And by stay around a while, I mean spend the rest of his life here building, you know, churches, hospitals, hotels, all that lovely stuff. Well. You see, when he built the finest hotel of all, Ponce de Leon, at least until it was, until you got into it last night, I heard about what you did, great job. He built it right across the way from where the original county jail was. And as you might imagine, <laughs> Mr. Flagler ran into a few problems. You see, we'd stand right at the windows all night long and just harass those fancy for a folk. Oh, it was great! You know who didn't think it was so great, though? The rich folk. Oh, they hated it. You know who really hated it? Mr. Flagler. Because it's rich folk. Yes, they come up to him and complain. They complain. They complain. So Mr. Flagler, what did he do? He went to the county commission. And he complained and complained and complained. Well, you see the county commission, they don't much like the second richest man in the world complaining about their jail. And they asked, well, what do you want us to do about it? He says, I want you to move the jail. The county commission says, are you insane? Move the jail, we ain't got the money for that, let alone the resources, and we especially don't have the competence because we're politicians. Well, that was until Mr. Flagler does what anyone does when they want politicians to do something. Pulled $10,000 in cash out of his pocket, threw it down right there on the table. And what do y'all think they said then? Yep. Where would you like your new jail, Mr. Flagler? That's right. Mr. Flagler said, well, since I'm paying for this on my dime, I got a few stipulations. Number one, when you build this jail, it cannot be any less than one mile outside of my town. Well, guess what, my friends? We're a mile and a half outside of town. Number two, when they build this jail, it cannot look like a jail. You see, Mr. Flagler, his railroad's just right there. He doesn't want his guests being the first thing they see is a big, sticky jail. No, they want it. They want a nice building to look at. So he, he doesn't want it to look like a jail. Let me ask y'all something. Does this look like a jail to you? No. No, it don't. It's a pink jail. You have any idea how humiliating it is as a man to be locked up in a pink jail? It's completely emasculating. My own mother laughs at me when she comes to visit once a year. And my parents are from Ireland. They've been locked up in some hardcore English prisons. Uh huh. My mom says, at least your dog was man enough to get locked in a real jail. Unlike you, you sissy, you get locked in a pink jail. What's the matter with you? And I say, Mom! Ouch! So we explored some of the punishments before going inside of the jail. And what the consensus that we came to is basically that though everyone knows that you don't want to go to jail in America, that was more so the case back then. It was way worse back then. All right, everybody. Welcome to the jail gallows. As you have figured out by now, we are a hanging jail. There have been eight documented hangings that took place in this jail. Did you catch that? Documented. So we learned some stats and details on this jail during our tour, one of which was the average lifespan of inmates in this jail, which happened to be two to four years, and the average sentence was five years, which means that basically everyone that went into this jail died in jail. And this was due to the horrendous conditions. Um, one of, an example of that is that the, their bathrooms, there's no plumbing, so the bathrooms were a bucket sent in to the each cell and it would sit in there for a week before being changed out. Baths were also terrible. They were a big basin in the back of the jail that they filled with soap and water and everyone shared. Ladies, this is your domain. Welcome to your new place of employment. Let me ask y'all something. Does it look pretty cozy to you? Yeah. Man, I wasn't talking to you, but thank you for answering. <laughs> now, what if I told y'all this was actually the deadliest room in the jail? Well, here's why. Remember how I told y'all outside that this jail can get up to 120 degrees easily in the summertime? Guess what? This stove right here, and this is the original stove, by the way, this burns 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year round. It doesn't stop for any reason whatsoever. That means it's even hotter in this jail, in this room. You all right? What we're walking into now is the sheriff's quarters. So while conditions in the jail were terrible, the sheriff was living comfy in here. And 
about the warrants, he would write out his warrants, but he would write on this typewriter that his hands were too big for. So the warrants were unreadable, and he did not care. So the sh- the officers that would go to collect the warrants, collect the new inmates based on the warrants, they were scared of the sheriff. So oftentimes they would just pick up the first drunk person they saw and bring him to jail in place of the person that the warrant was for. And on the topic of conditions, bad conditions in the jail, I should mention that those baths that were a giant tub that everyone shared in the back where people would shave, uh, you know, clean themselves completely, um, the women actually would bathe on the second day. So the tub would be used by all the men during one day, then they would sit overnight with all of their hair and dirt and grime in it. And this was once a month they would wash. And then the women would go the second day. You can imagine how detrimental that was to their health. And these cells that you see here would fit up to 20 male inmates during peak jail usage before it was closed. Anyways, the old jail museum tour was totally worth it and something I would recommend to anyone visiting St. Augustine. Next up was dinner in preparation for our ghost tour. Uh, back at the campsite now that dinner was pretty good um, not too expensive either so that's nice and now we're waiting for the right time to leave to go on our ghost tour um, where we have a ghost tour scheduled with a very good ghost touring company so we're excited for that we'll take you along with us I'm scared she's scared that concludes this video. Make sure to check out video one and stick around the channel for video three as it will come out soon. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.